everyone, it's Kim Dello here with a new art walkthrough video and today I wanted to share the making of the Seth Apter inspired canvas board project. Some of you might recognise it as it's my, one of my paper arts you make and take projects from the Ali Pali Craft Show back in September. I'm going to go through all of the stages for this piece and you can find a list for all of the products I've used just below the video. I'm going to build the project up in layers so first I just want to cover a 6 by 6 inch canvas board with buff and terracotta paper artsy fresco finished paint. And This paint is from Seth's limited edition colour pack. I've added the paint directly onto the canvas board and I'm just using a plastic card to spread the paint over the surface. I'm not being too precise at this point, I just want to get a good cover and then I'm swapping onto a piece of foam to spread the paint over the edges of the board. When applied thinly the fresco finished paint will dry really quickly but I've got some areas that are quite thick so I'm going to lift off any excess paint with a piece of kitchen towel. This is a great way to add a bit more texture. Next I'm going to apply some mermaid paint and this time I'm adding it to a palette and then applying it to the canvas with a piece of foam. I don't want to cover the whole surface and I'm again using some kitchen towel just to lift off some of the paint. You can also spray the surface with water too to help lift off areas that are still wet. The background colour layer is done and now I'm going to add some texture. Spread some mahogany paint onto cardstock embossed in Seth's Spellbinders Gridiron folder and press it onto the surface. The trick is to get the paint thick enough that it doesn't dry out too quickly but not so thick that it just blobs when you press it onto the surface. You can use any cardstock for this technique, I just happen to have some paper artsy waxed paper already embossed in this folder. Now I'm going to add some stamping texture with the French text stamp from Impression Obsessions by spreading the paint thinly on a palette, pressing the stamp into the paint and then pressing it onto the canvas. Spray the stamp with some water, then lightly scrub it with an old soft toothbrush to clean it. Next I'm going to add some texture using different stencils from Seth's Stencil Girl range. At this point I'm just checking the placement of the elements to get an idea of how they will look in the finished project. Once I'm happy with my placement, I will start with the Urban Bar stencil and add some very small amounts of the Mermaid and South Pacific paint using a foam sponge. I want to build up the paint bit by bit through the stencil. The less paint I use, the, the better you won't get so much seepage under the stencil. I'm using the Urban Bar in two places on the canvas, but the top bar will end up mostly covered so it really is just there for some texture and I'm not being quite as careful with this one. Then I'm going to move on to the Techno Insider Star with the terracotta and mahogany paint. The insider stencils are designed to match with the outsider stencils so to use them take note of which way up the name label is on the stencil and use the coordinating stencil the same way up. This will help you match them. At this point in the filming I didn't actually have the outsider stencils so instead I went on to adding more stamp texture using the first set Seth designed for Paper Artsy, the ESA01 set. This time I apply the paint thinly onto the stamp surface using the foam sponge and picking up the paint from my palette then stamping the stamp onto the surface in a couple of places. Next another check on placement of elements and the two I'm using are cardstock die cut with the splatter proof and the pocket watch spellbinder dies. I'm colouring these with South Pacific and Baltic Blue using a foam sponge. Obviously don't forget if you colour them on a page from your art journal instead of using kitchen towel like I'm using then you have some ready made texture for another project. Once I got my hands on the outside of stencil I was able to finish this part of the stenciling. So making sure that I had the stencil the same way up as I'd used the inside of stencil I lined them up and then added paint in exactly the same way as I did before using a sponge. I really love the mix and match coordinated stencil, very clever idea and you don't have to use them in any particular order, you can use the outsider first if you like, it doesn't really matter. I then worked my way around each of the insider stenciled elements on my canvas and gave them a border with the outsider stencil and the beauty of this is that I can easily give the outsider a different look with a different colour, it's just an extra fun way of adding some more texture. We have lots of colour and lots of texture but now it is time to bring the piece together and I'm going to use some dynamic harmony to give the piece a cohesive look. 
I'm using the Make It Count stencil to block in one corner with colour. You may have noticed that I've been adding the straight line elements at angles and this is to give the finished piece that dynamic look I want. So I'm going to mirror this with the blocked in area. To continue the number sequence, I turn the piece around and use the bottom part of the stencil and carefully stencil around the 6 and the 7. Then I block the rest of the area in. For the final touch of this area, I'm just going around the edge with some paint on a sponge. Now all I need to do is glue down the die cut elements that I had coloured earlier with paint. I'm just using some golden regular gel that I keep in this very handy bottle applicator for all these types of gluing jobs. That is the finished project and as you can see in the close-ups, it's packed full of texture. I hope you have enjoyed watching it grow layer by layer. Check back soon for more videos of my paper artsy make and take projects from crafting at Ali Pali September 2016. Thanks for watching and see you next time.